everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Hick Hack Go. And now, here's our host, Jim Caldwell. Oh, thank you. Terrific. Thank you very much. Welcome to everybody here in the studio audience and, of course, to you at home. Glad you could join us for another edition of Tic Tac Doe. Now, our current champion, we crowned her on our last show. She's very excited about how well she's been doing so far. We'll find out what she thinks as we bring out our two players right now. Charlie? Well, Jim, first our current champion, a teacher and consultant whose interests include bargain hunting and writing, a winnings total in cash and prizes, $6,450, meet Lori Brown! And her opponent is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. A teacher and former entertainer whose interests include music and dancing, the Bon Pastel. Hello, Bon. I'm good. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank Looking you. Looking dapper today. I try. <laughs> you try, huh? Last time when we met you just at the end of our last show, you mentioned uh, you use entertainment your entertainment uh, background that you have in teaching your students. Explain what you mean. Well, in order to uh, get the point across, sometimes I rely on pathos or comedy. Or sometimes I just collapse or whatever it takes to get them involved so that it makes an impression upon them. Certainly gets their attention doing oh, that yes, kind of stuff, Oh, yes, yes. Right? Uh, and uh, we have a good report going back and forth. Something interesting that happened on some of these watches that alarm. They have a little beep, beep. Yep. And uh, one of the students' watches went off, said, beep, beep. I said, well, that sounds like a microwave oven. And a little later, my watch went off, beep, beep. And they said, ah, your watch is hungry. <laughs> so they learned that. A lot of humor in your classroom as well. Do you think any of your students are watching today? Uh, they will see this. Yeah? Yes. Well, all right, all you students at home, you be sure to root old Mr. Baston on. Make sure he does well. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank Good you. to have you here. Mm -hmm. All right, Lori, Hello. how are you feeling today? I'm fine. Yeah? Out of breath, you sound like. Oh, I'm excited. Tell us about your bargain hunting. Well, I love to go to second-hand stores, and uh, I tend to be rather thrifty, and so I like to find some real bargains in some of the stores that I go to. Good for you. Yeah. Well, you, so far, your, your bargain hunting, <laughs> if you want to call it that, has been paying off here. So far, you've picked up $6,450 in cash and prizes. Let's start a brand new game. Lori and Vaughn, the players. Okay, I want to direct your attention to the board. Take out, uh, check out these nine categories for this game. Numero uno, it's a dilemma. Chemistry, TV cops, world literature, seesaw, foreign words, trivia dare, and one word names. And remember those red boxes are special categories. I'll describe them if we come to them in the game. Lori, you're the champion. Start us off. Where would you like to go first? Oh, let's start with numero uno. Top left-hand corner, Lori, listen carefully. The world's oldest subway system opened in this European city in 1863. Today, it is one of the most extensive systems in the world with more than 200 miles of track. Name that city. <sighs> London. London's right. <laughs> Numero uno. Get the next. Top left-hand corner, $200 pot. Let's shuffle the categories. All right, Vaughn. One word names, please. One word names. He jumps on it. Right in the center box. You'll have some extra time on this one. Listen carefully, Vaughn. The supersonic jet airliner with the one word name Concorde made its maiden flight in 1969. Today, it travels across the Atlantic in less than four hours. The Concorde was jointly developed by two European nations. Name them both. Here's your extra time. <laughs> center box Vaughn, the supersonic jet airliner with the one word name Concorde made its maiden flight in 1969. Today it travels across the Atlantic in less than four hours. The Concorde was jointly developed by two European nations. Name them both. Were they the United Kingdom and France? That's right. You have the center box. England and France is right, Vaughn. Good for you. Oh, in the center box, $500 pot. We're going to take a break. We'll see you in a minute. In a world desperate come September. Just started a brand new game between Lori and Vaughn. They both happen to be teachers, so it should be an interesting game. Have a $500 pot. Time to shuffle. Lori, it's your turn. Oh, let's try Trivia Dare. Trivia Dare is one of those special categories. Either one of you can get the box, Lori. I'll read you this question, then you decide whether you'll answer it first or dare Vaughn to answer first. Here's the question. This famous fictional detective debuted in the 1930 novel 
secret of the old clock. This detective has since appeared in more than 52 books, selling over 60 million copies. Is that detective Sherlock Holmes, Nero Wolfe, or Nancy Drew? What are you going to do, Lori? Answer or dare? I'm going to answer. Going for the answer. And the box. Is that detective Sherlock Holmes, Nero Wolfe, or Nancy Drew? Nancy Drew. You have the box. All right, Lori. Put an X in the top right-hand corner. 700 in the pot. Let's shuffle. It's back to you, Vaughn. <laughs> Trivia dare for the block, please. All right, we just played it. This time it's a critical situation. You want it for a block. Lori, if you get this box, you'll win your second game of Tic-Tac-Doe. Now remember, Vaughn, I'll read you the question, then you'll have to decide whether you're going to answer it or dare Lori to answer first. These nuts are related to poison ivy, and in their natural state, they contain a poisonous oil. Roasting them, however, removes that oil and makes the nuts safe to eat. Vaughn, is that nut the filbert, Brazil nut, or cashew? What are you going to do? Answer or dare? I'll dare. All right, Lori, for the game, is that nut the filbert, Brazil nut, or cashew? I'm going to say the Brazil nut. No. Vaughn, it's I'd, over to you. I'd you, say the cashew. You're going to the cashew. You're right. You have a block. <laughs> All right, Trivia Dare gets an O for a successful block on Vaughn's part. $900 in the pot. Let's shuffle. We are back to you, Lori. TV cop for the block. See if you can block Vaughn this time. This popular TV detective series featured a San Diego police detective named Downtown Brown. Brown was the friend and sometimes protector of two brothers who ran an unorthodox struggling detective agency. For the block, name that series. <sighs> Simon and Simon. Lori, can't give you the block. $900 in the pot. Let's shuffle. Vaughn. Well, this is a tough decision, but I think I'll go for one word names for the win, please. Vaughn, if you successfully answer this question, you'll become our new champion. Now listen. In 1963, the folk rock trio, Peter, Paul, and Mary, released a children's song about a young boy named Jackie Paper, who was befriended by a dragon. For the game, and $1,100, what was that dragon's one-word name? Puff, 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 puff. Puff is right, you win. Puff the Magic Dragon does it for you, Vaughn. A vertical tic-tac-toe, $1,100. You just won it. Congratulations, Vaughn. You'll have your first shot at uh, seeing if you can beat the dragon here in just a few moments. But first, Lori Brown, you've been a fun champion. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, Great. we're delighted you were able to come on the show. You picked up, among other things, a great trip to Scotland. Yeah. And you'll be leaving us with cash and prizes totaling $6,450. Thanks for playing Tic Tac Toe, Lori. All right, Vaughn, you ready to play up against the dragon? Yep. Come on over, let's do it. Congratulations, congratulations. Well, nice job. Now it's your chance to see what you can do to the dragon. Behind these numbers are various amounts of money. There's a tick, a tack, and the dragon. That's his awful roar. You want to get the tick and the tack or reach $1,000 or more, Vaughn, and here's what you'll win. Tell him, Charlie. Well, Vaughn, a wealth of abilities are at your fingertips when you touch the keyboards of these prizes. First, Vaughn, you'll find calculations, a breeze, when you touch the keys of this convenient home computer. The Commodore 64 computer featuring 64K memory, full-size keyboard, color graphics, sprite sound capability, music composer cartridge, and program reference guide all from Commodore. Then you'll make beautiful music on a fine electronic keyboard. Select it with a service merchandise gift certificate, famous brand name items select from our 500-page catalog, or redeem at one of our showrooms furnished by service merchandise. Next, if you hit the wrong key, your spelling will be corrected by this computerized typewriter. The new Smith Corona typewriter with Spell Right 2 Dictionary. It catches your mistakes before you do, finds it, erases it, and even helps you spell it. And finally, Vaughn, you'll have a prize worth 1000 for computerized cooking. Just touch the keypad of this combination, Electric Range and Microwave Oven. Tappan's Electric Range features a big microwave oven on top with tap and touch controls, 10 cooking speeds, and a self-cleaning lower oven with black glass oven doors, furnished by Tappan. 
this keyboard's package is worth in cash and prizes over $3,250. All right. <laughs> that keyboard's package. Now, you know, you won the last game with Puff the Magic Dragon. Let's see if you can beat our dragon. Or slay the dragon. Slay the dragon. That's, those are the good words. Remember, get the tick and the tack, you'll get the dough automatically. Well, I see my brother Pierre out there. He says number three. Number three. All right, we're going for number three already. Here we go. 250. 250. Good start. Number two. Number two. Number two. Vaughn is working fast. Oh! Well, you didn't slay the dragon that time. Let's find out where everything else was in the board. Let's see the tick, the tack. There they were. They were up there. Well, so far, you've picked up. Can you see that over there? Oh, yes. $1,100 is yours. Right. And you have the opportunity to go on and play against your next opponent right after we take this break. Don't go away. Now, here's Jim. Okay, Charlie, we just crowned a brand new champion. His name is Vaughn Bastone. Are you ready to meet your challenger, Vaughn? Yes, I am. Your first challenger, Charlie, bring her on out for us, please. But Jim, she's a legislative coordinator whose interests include politics and dieting. Meet Pat Garrett! <laughs> Welcome, Pat. Thank you. Tell us about your interest in dieting. Well, I kind of became an expert in dieting. Last summer, I lost about 60 pounds. Ooh, 60 pounds? That is a lot. How'd you do it? Well, I was under a doctor's care, and I had no solid food for three full months. How did you stand that? Huh? Well, it was probably the hardest thing that I ever did, but I learned a lot when I was on that diet. Why was that? Well, I learned that if I really concentrate and put my mind to it and take it one step at a time, I can do anything. You have to make many goals and take them one at a time, right? That's right, one day at a time. All right, well, I'm sure you've set your mind uh, on winning here. Good luck. Thank you. Pat, Vaughn, take a look at these nine categories for this game. <coughs> Fads and Follies, Showdown, Art, Dropouts, Latin America, Auction, Movies, Number Please, Who Am I? Those are the nine categories. Vaughn, you're our champion. Start us off. Try art, please. Art it is. Here's the question. This art movement began in Switzerland in 1916 as a reaction against rigid traditions in art. The movement took its name from a French word for hobby horse and was a forerunner of the Surrealist movement. Name the movement. Cubists? No, Dada. Dadaism. Dadaism, I guess it's called. Okay, Vaughn, can't give you the box. Let's shuffle. Pat? Let's try dropouts in the center. All right, see how well you do with this two-part question, Pat. This young actress dropped out of Beverly Hills High School to pursue acting. In 1977, she won the starring female role in the Star Wars saga and became a superstar overnight. Name the actress and also name the character she played in Star Wars. Here's your extra time. Pat Centerbox question dropouts the category. This young actress dropped out of Beverly Hills High School to pursue acting. In 77, she won the starring female role in the Star Wars saga and became a superstar overnight. Name the actress. Carrie Fisher. That's right. All right, to get the center box, name the character she played in Star Wars. I believe that was Princess Leia. You're right. <laughs> Dropout, center box, get to know. We now have a $300 pot, and we're going to take a break. We're going to be back to continue the game after this. Just started a brand new game between our players, Vaughn Bastone and Pat Garrett. Let's get back to it with a $300 pot. Time to shuffle. Vaughn, it's your turn. Well, let's try art again. All right, let's see how it goes this time. This printmaking process was perfected by Rembrandt. In it, the artist scratches his design through a protective coating on a piece of metal. The metal is then soaked in acid to reveal the design. Name the process. Would you like to come up and see my etchings? Etching, that's right. Okay. Put an X in the bottom left-hand corner, $500 pot. Let's shuffle. Pat? Uh, let's try Latin America in the upper left. All right, Pat. These Indians built a complex civilization in Latin America. Once bustling cities like Tikal now lie abandoned deep in the jungles of Mexico and Guatemala. Name the Indians. Aztecs. No. 
the Mayans. The Maya civilization. Pat can't give you the box. 500 in the pot. Let's shuffle. Back to you, Vaughn. Oh, wow. I suppose I'll go with art again. You like that category, don't no. you? I <laughs> know, but here we go. All right, in one artistic printing process, a squeegee forces ink through a stencil and a screen and onto the printed surface. Name this artistic printing process. The old silk screen. Silk screening is right. Silk screening. All right, Vaughn, we'll put another X on the board for you. $700 pot. Time to shuffle again. Back to you, Pat. I don't like it, but I'll have to go with auction for the block. Auction category is one of those special ones you both get to play. You need it for a block, Pat. Vaughn, if you get this box, you'll win your second game of tic-tac-doe. Now remember, you both will bid on how many correct answers you can give to this question, and remember, high bidder gets control. There are 14 cities in the world which have names that begin with the letter M and have more than one million inhabitants. How many of them can you name? Pat, you selected the category. The bidding starts with you. I can name three. She says three. Vaughn, you want to top that? I'll try four. He says reluctantly four. Pat, you want to take it to five or six, maybe? He sounded reluctant. I think I'm going to let him try. All right, Vaughn, in order for you to win the game, you're going to have to make your bid of four cities in the world which have names begin with the letter M and have more than one million inhabitants as well. Go. Madrid. Madrid is on the list. Manila. Manila's another one. Two Montre more. Montreal. Montreal is also there. One more and you'll win the game. Mesopotamia. I drew a blank. No. Pat, give me one more answer, one more correct answer that's on this list. You will have a block. Mexico City. That's right. You have a block. <laughs> the other one's on this list. Medillion, Medillion, excuse me, Colombia, Milan, Medan, Indonesia, Minsk in USSR, Monterey, Mexico, Montevideo in Uruguay, Moscow, Munich, and Madras in India. Long list of cities that have over a million. We now have a block on the board, $900 pot. Let's shuffle. Okay, Vaughn. The old art. Art again for you, this time for a block. If you're visiting a museum named the Prado and viewing the many masterpieces by artists like El Greco and Goya, in what European capital city are you? I believe you would be in Madrid, the capital. That's correct. Madrid is right. You have a block. <laughs> All right, put an art, an X in art. We have a $1,100 pot now, and just four boxes remain. Let's show. Pat? Another one of those special categories. I'll have to go with showdown for the block. Showdown. Special one, as you say. You need it for a block. Vaughn, if you get this box, you will win your second game of tic-tac-doe. Now, in showdown, I'll ask questions with two-part answers. The first of you to buzz in with the correct answer wins the box, unless your opponent can come up with the other half, and we'll keep playing till one of you fails to come up with an answer. And I'll remind you, I only need one answer when you jump in. Hands on the buzzers. Here we go. Name the two tallest office buildings in the world. Vaughn? World Trade Center. That's one. Pat? Sears Towers. That's correct. Next question. Name the two actors who starred in the 1976 film All the President's Men. Pat. Robert Redford. That's one. Vaughn? Pacino. No. Pat, you have a block. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman is the other one, Vaughn. Dustin Hoffman. All right, you just picked up a block, Pat. Way to go. $1,300 in the pot, and we just have three boxes left in this game. We're going to come back after these words. Stay with us. Pick up the game next time. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Wish you the best of luck Thank as we you. kind of trundle through the game. We're down <laughs> to just a couple of boxes. We'll see how it ends next time, Pat. Right. And, of course, Vaughn, you're over here kind of beaming. You've done well so far. You feeling all right? No, I'm suffering from a little insomnia. <laughs> Don't say that. Well, look, we're going to find out. We'll keep you awake on our next show. You'll come back with $1,100.
Wish you both the best of luck. I'm Jim Caldwell. We'll see you on our next Tic Tac Go. The stakes are high. One mistake and Chris retains the championship. So it pays to go slow. Breathe right there. Play your cards right. I'll try it higher. And you might win the show. Lower than the queen. Yeah! On Card Sharks, Wild Game, Witty Poetry. Next on Game Show Network. My production.